चलो सोशल जस्टिस थ्रू लीगल सर्विसेज इज नॉट ओनली वन ऑफ द एस्पेक्ट्स बियॉन्ड दैट सोशल जस्टिस ऑलवेज प्लेज अ पिविटल रोल एंड द जर्नी विद इन द सोशल जस्टिस इज नॉट आफ्टर द फॉर्मुलेशन ऑफ द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन बट इट गोज बियॉन्ड दैट even prior to that and when we were talking about as we have seen how the social justice have evolved with the flux of time we requested mr uh, dr subramania who has already shared few insights on different topics on our platform and he always helps us to connect with persons who have immense knowledge and uh, today we are being joined by ma'am vidya uh, Selbo, uh, selboni Who is an advocate and also a visiting faculty to the CMR University of School Legal uh, Schools, Bangalore. And since the long vacations are starting, I will not take much time. I will request Sir to give the few thoughts, and then we will take the session on the social justice through legal service. Over to you, Sir. Yeah. Uh, very good evening to all of you. Uh, Mr. Vikas and his team, in in particular, uh, the concept of social justice uh, is not a new doctrine. It was there earlier as well, and if you go through the Hammurabian Code, uh, reduction of the court fee or the court fee charged to the poor was much lower than the court fee which was charged to the other communities or the other class of people. so that means the very concept of social justice was prevalent uh, even during the time of bc and at a later stage it was continued by the emperors of the time who ruled india from time to time now we come back come to the period the period the, the or the adoption of the constitution of the state of india itself now the uh, the government of india after getting the independence was able to have a constitutional committee and this committee which is known as the drafting committee for the adoption of a new constitution for the state of india and these draftsmen over 200 people thought what type of constitution we should have and having deliberated almost uh, nearly 2 plus years they ultimately adopted a constitution for the state of india so the constitution of india or the constitution which is given to ourselves by the people of this country so we have given a constitution of our own and when we have given a constitution of our own what type of justice we should have first is justice social justice economic justice political so these are the three aspects which is being harped upon by the preamble to the constitution of india itself so social justice and the achievement of or the realization of the social justice is one of the sine qua non which is being remember thought of by thought by the framers of the constitution of this country now there are towards the constitution came in and when we speak about a bit of the constitution itself we have what we known as the chapter on fundamental rights in part 3 of the constitution thereafter we have a chapter which is known as part 4 which is the directive principle state policy now the very objective of the adoption of part 4 from 35 onwards up to article 50 is to realize that the state of india should become an egalitarian society and remember everyone should be in a position to have an access to justice whether he is a rich or he is a poor he should be treated equally the government of india has adopted various measures for most of the writers in the area of constitutional law or do we call it the formative rights is between 19 uh, 50 to 1990 went to the extent of pointing out remember you cannot uh, go to the court of law for the enforcement of uh, what we call as part 4 of the constitution but then a series of decisions have come up before the court of law and in these decisions the court pointed out it is a just right of the people and this just right of the people which are enunciated in part of four of the constitution can be enforced anywhere that is where one of the greatest thinkers and a freedom fighters 
uh, and a liberal thinker who championed the cause of human rights in the state of the United States went to the extent of declaring a, a threat to justice anywhere is a threat to injustice everywhere. So that means an injustice anywhere is a threat to justice throughout the world that has to be remember, contained. That was the message that was given under the Constitution of India. Now the Constitution came into force and the Constitution became functional. But then the Law Commission of India submitted a report in the year 1958. In the year, in its report, which submitted to the government of India, went to the extent of pointing out legal aid to the poorest of the people who are not socially advantageous who are not in a position to fight a case on their own, who cannot, because of illiteracy or ignorance, are not in a position to present themselves, must be protected by the law. This is one of the mandates of the Constitution under the Directive of Principle State Policy. So when this was done, members of the Indian community or the lawmakers were thinking how best it can be introduced. And this could not be introduced for several years, but then the 42 Second Amendment came into force in 1976. The 42nd Amendment, when it came into force, it amended Article 39 of the Constitution of India. So by way of an amendment, Article 39A was introduced into the Constitution. Article 39A of the Constitution simply points out the people who are not in a position to protect themselves are to be legally protected. So, Justice must be given. They should be in a position to approve the court of law. And the court should be in a position to render justice so as, remember, the principle of equality as enshrined in Article 14 of the Constitution, remember, is enforced in stricto senso and becomes a reality for everybody. It is Article 14 of the Constitution which said equality before the law and equal protection of the law. And consequent to this, Article 19 protected given several rights. But then these rights should not remain illusory and wishful thinking. Everyone should be in a position to enforce. That is where the, the idea was developed. Now, there afterwards, we, when we, after uh, 1976, under the 42nd Amendment, which was adopted the Constitution, uh, at that time, there was a great judge before the Supreme Court of India. And this great judge was none but Justice V. R. Krishnaya. And in a series of cases, he went to the extent of admitting the petition before the Supreme Court of India only on postcards. Just think of this. So if the aggrieved party is unable to protect himself or herself, it has to be done and it has to be protected and justice must be rendered and done. The contribution of Krishnaya is known to posterity in the judicial history of the state of India. There afterwards, remember, there was another great man who was none but Justice, Honorable Justice Bhagavati. Bhagavati, when he was appointed as a Judicial Committee member to provide social justice to the needy in the state of India, have contributed and delivered wonderful judgments. But then things did not materialize and it had to take place several years. And the government of India thought of formulating an action plan. Now, the action plan which was formulated by the government of India was to see that the entire territory of the state of India stretching from Jammu and Kashmir to Kanyakumari should have one law. And this one law should be in a position to enforce and to protect the victims of injustice so that justice is rendered to everybody. That was the objective. So it was in the year 1987, the Legal Services uh, Act came to be established. It was in 1987 that afterwards this one law, the Legal Services Act, which came to be established and enforced, became one law for the entire territory of the state of India. Now that afterwards in 1987 it came in, but then a lot of developments were taking place. It was not functional. But in 1995, it became very effective. When Justice Anand was appointed as the executive chairman of the Legal Services Committee of the State of India, remember, lots of developments were taken place. 
it was he who was appointed remember the member secretary and other people and he was responsible in formulating the rules uh, that was paved for the working of the legal service committee and subsequent development had taken place during its tenure and it was in 1997 for the first time uh, the the legal service authority with the assistance of the chief patron for the chief justice of state of india was able to call a meeting of the the state level legal service authority committees and they formulated and are afterwards it was functioning very well now the or what exactly the objective of this developments that has taken place when i speak about the the the, the courts were in a position to uh, uh, help us in defining and redefining certain aspects and certain procedural laws but then the legal service authority in the legal a committee the committee which was established at the apex court uh, along with the pattern who the chief justice of india were able to classify certain things and were able to promote certain things to a law now when i speak about this there are several things that is being spoken at length one is legal services for the differently abled children now you may be knowing it is not a man made disaster and it is ultimately by birth some kind of infirmities will come in. and such people because of the disability must be protected and services must be rendered to them and you can't just leave them alone because they are part of the state of the state of india and protection naturally remember deemed to be given by them and that is where the legal service authority said these are the people who are entitled to have protection then because in the in a society like india 4 to 8% of the children are differently uh, abled people you can't just leave them 4 to 8% of the people of this country means a lot when we have nearly 135 crores of population today then legal services to senior citizens now this was adopted in the year 2016 now senior citizens remember you have as many as remember 30 to 40 crores of people in this country above 60 years now children when they get educated for one reason or other the parents uh, are abandoned and they are not taken care the required help is not forthcoming in a few cases the parents are responsible in nourishing and helping the children in coming up and getting them jobs and they sacrifice everything but in their old age there is nobody to take care of them in such inhospitable climate the law comes into their succor and help and legal services are to be provided to such people then the legal services to victims of accident attack now in the colleges and the university campuses you know or in some other places you should find that acid is being thrown and innocent people for no reason their charm is being destroyed or they are being killed in a few cases in such cases they deserve they deserve remember help they need out protection they should be taken care by the community that is why legal services are being protected for uh, such people victims of acid attack as well then legal services for disaster victims now oh, you might be knowing now flood famine pestilence drought these are the things which are not man made and in situations like this for example in karnataka you have the last several days we find lots of uh, uh, all the rivers are in spate and many houses are being washed off and many people are remember during sleep are taken away by the rivers now in these circumstances you know national disaster and relief uh, mission which comes to their rescue wherever required the legal help the legal service authorities come and try to rescue the people and they give whatever protection is being given uh, to them then legal services to the workers who are in an unorganized labor now for example you might be knowing lots of buildings uh, come up and these buildings especially in the metropolitan cities in the urban areas in delhi in bangalore in many other bombay are very common and workers from rural villages they migrate there and they stay and sacrifice themselves and at times if they fall down and for one reason or other they are killed even 
In such a situations, the workers who work in this industry, that is what we call as the unorganized sestar, must be helped and legal services will be forthcoming uh, to them freely. Now then, legal uh, services to the victims of drug menace. Now campuses, especially educational campuses today have uh, full of uh, people inflicted with the drugs. And in situations like this, for no reason they suffer. Or in the company, they come across the drug addicts. With the result, they also become get addicted to these things. They need protection. They should be brought back to society. They should become good citizens of society. And for those, for these aspects, they are also given protection under the legal services authority. Then there afterwards, uh, uh, protection of enforcement of uh, uh, what we call as uh, tribal rights. Now, tribal people, in order to protect their ethnicity and originality, try hard. And while trying to maintain this, they are at times under target. Now, in situations of this kind, they need protection. And this is when I speak about tribal people, they are the, at times, in most of the cases, they are indigenous people. Indigenous people, in order to protect themselves, to protect their cultures, to protect their ethnicity, to protect their original uh, habitat, had to suffer a lot. And at times, remember, uh, they are not in a position to protect themselves. Now, what has been done under the Legal Service Act, the Act is they are being protected by the law and services, legal services will be provided to uh, them. Then thereafters, the other important thing that is being spoken, legal services for children. Now, the legal services for children is very much essential because you have an international convention which was adopted in 1979, which came into force in 1980, rights of children. And consequent to that, the government of India also has adopted many, many legislations for improving uh, and protecting the children. Wherever the life of a child who is below the age of uh, uh, 18 years is in peril or in danger, it is the duty of the government of the day to come uh, and protect and the legal service authority will do the needful. That is what, what is being, uh, being spoken at length in situations of this kind. In addition to this, there are uh, other aspects that is being spoken. Now, other aspects relating to, especially, uh, see, for example, women. Women who are forcibly taken to unlawful activities. And women along with the children. And it is the duty of the government of the day, along with the legal service authority, to protect them. And legal service authority has been doing this work, remember, wonderfully. And the work is actually going on. Now, this is something relating to the areas which are being uh, uh, taken up. Now, the legal service authorities, when they have enforced or enforced their objectives, how this is being done is the most crucial thing. Now, you have what we call as the legal service authority at the national level. When I speak about the national level, the Chief Justice of India is the patron. And another senior judge will be the executive chairman of the legal service authority at the central level. And he will be having a member secretary and a subordinate office. And that will be responsible, remember, in formulating rules after elaborate discussions. And they try to implement these rules throughout the legal services care in India. Now, at the state level, what we call it, we have the chief justice who is the chairman. And the chief justice of the high court is the chairman. And along with the chief justice of the high court, we have another person who is the uh, executive chairman of the legal service authority. And these people, along with the member secretary of the state, who is a uh, member of the rank of a uh, uh, district judge, session judge, who is the member secretary, will be in a position to formulate rules and able to implement most of the rules uh, which are being laid down under by the legal service authority. Now, thereafter, when we come to district level, we have the district judge who is the presiding officer, who functions at the behest of the executive chairman of the state and the chief justice, who is the chief patron, and lays down rules, regulations for implementation of the legal services within the district. 
No, it is not limited to the district alone. It goes, remember, still lower. And when I speak about the lower level, it goes to the taluka level. And in the taluka level, you have a district legal services committee. And they involve lots of people. And these people are part of the legal services committee and what assistance is required to the needy are taken care. Now, what the very object of this is to just bring in. Now, what we social justice from top to the taluka level. And when I speak about the taluka level, from the taluka level, it will get, get shifted to the panchayat level as well. So members of the panchayat with the, the, the with the persons from what we call a taluk headquarters with a member from the district legal authority come in and try to give a redressal to a particular problem which come under the, the ones which I have just mentioned before you. Now these are instances how it is being functioning. Now then I just intend to speak to you what exactly are the nature of work which is being done. Now when I speak about the nature of the work, lots of, for example, in the state of Karnataka, between uh, 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 October to November, October 21st to November end, the Karnataka Legal Services Authority was able to visit as many as 29,000 villages. And these villages, remember, not only visited and they tried to provide legal services to the needy. And they found out the people through a scientific method. And this scientific method was able to help them a lot. And when I speak about the compensation, remember, 9 crores, 15 lakhs compensation was dispersed by it. Now, this is, remember, in any imagination for a country like India, is a very good estimate. Nobody can, just cannot remember, brush aside. That is the type of work which is being done. In Karnataka, I am just telling you, to legal services, when it provided, there are as many as 2,000 advocates other than the para-legal uh, uh, personnel who try to work for this purpose. Now, the other one, how legal aid is being given to them? Suppose, for example, a victim of justice is not able to protect himself. So, at that time, the concerned person will be allowed and permitted to file a case. And when he goes and files a case, naturally, whatever work is required to be done, which come under the provisions which I have just mentioned, will be borne by the legal service authority. Now, you may ask me what type of thing. First one is, remember, you have to prepare the plaint. And to prepare the plaint, you require papers. Then afterwards, you require all other materials as well. And when it is done, court fee has to be paid. And a court fee also will be paid by the legal service authority. And the advocates, remember, who are on the role uh, for this purpose will take up the matter. And that is where it is being done. Suppose, for example, from the lower court, the matter goes up to the high court. Now, when it goes to the high court, remember, naturally, there will be a translation of the judgment. It, it requires, remember, some, some kind of fee which has to be paid. Processing fee, which is required, and all other additional expenses when the matter is filed before the court of law, if it is if it is genuinely required, all of them, all of them are paid by the legal service authority. Now, this is the most advantageous thing which is being given to a particular people who is who is denied justice. Now, for example, the executive chairman, two or three of them. Earlier, earlier, uh, Honorable Justice Arvind Kumar, he was the executive chairman who later became the chief justice of the Gujarat High Court. And currently, Honorable Justice Virapa is the chairman. And we have the member secretary, Sushidhar Shetty, and all other members, all of them are doing wonderful work. In fact, uh, uh, I have been just going through uh, the type of work which is being done there, and it is appreciated by everybody, applauded by everybody. And that is where justice at the doorsteps of the people. Now, the second part of the story, which I just intend to bring home is, what role the students have to play here? And when I speak about the, the role that is to be played by the students, the Bar Council of India, in the year 2016, after consulting uh, uh, the Legal Service Authority, 
and both of them in tandem adopted certain procedures. Now, what did the bar circular say? The circular issued by the bar council points out each law college is established in this country. Today, there may be about 1,900 law colleges in the country. And all of them, when they start functioning as a law college, is supposed to have a legal aid committee. It is called the legal aid clinic. And a legal aid clinic, which is established under the rules of 2016, is supposed to have a coordinator. And this coordinator is none but the staff of the college, a teaching staff of the college. Along with the teaching staff, there will be a student monitor, student coordinator. And there will be a legal aid committee. And this legal aid committee should be in a position to go to the villages, identify the villages, go to the place, and thereafter try to find out the existing problems there. Now, you may be interested to know what type of problems they face. Now, for example, take it this way. When you go to the villages, uh, uh, it is you first you try to find out the people and meet them. And there may be certain services which are required for them. Now, these services may be a few of them may not be having Aadhaar card. Without the Aadhaar card, you cannot do anything because everything connected with the Aadhaar card. And these people don't know where to go, whom to talk, whom to meet, and how to get it. They don't even know how to fill in the form. Now, the second one is some of them need health certificates because the government of India, in the event of se uh, severe problem with your health, will they go to the extent of giving you some lakhs of money. And in order to protect that, you should have the health card. Without the health card, you can't just get it. That is why, remember, they, you have to help in getting the health card. Some of them don't even have a birth certificate. And if they don't have the birth certificate, they don't know from where to get it. And in situations of this type, now naturally you can go there and help them in identifying the person, fill in the forms and get the birth certificate. A few of them, remember, passed away. But then unless you have the death certificate, the successors may not be able to get anything anywhere. So help them in getting the death certificate. Now, remember, a majority of the people will have property, but then don't have khata. Unless you have the khata, which is in your name, remember, your title to the property it cannot be enforced before the court of law. And they don't even know whom to approach. Naturally, to the tashildar who gives. That is where they, the concept of legal aid clinic came, in to be, came to be established, wherein the students prepare a questionnaire. Having prepared a questionnaire, what do these people need? These are a few of the things which I have pointed out. Hours together you can speak on this. And having done this, remember it is a scientific study, they, they put a question to each of the villagers. Suppose in a village there are 3,000 people, they go to the village and ask all of them, all the families, what do they have, whether they have or not. And thereafter they make these many people required uh, Aadhaar card. These many people required Khata card. And some of them require the birth certificate, death certificate, or remember, title to the property, whatever it be. Now then, remember, a day will come wherein through the hell, through the able assistance of the Legal Service Authority, a meeting of these people who are issuing the cards will be convened. Now first they will call the Shashildar, he will be there. Then they will call what we call as the, the Panchayat people who are supposed to issue certain certificates. On the, the, the days, remember, all will be cleared and the people will be happy. And this is, remember, peacefully done without any violence. Just nobody knows. See, first one is legal awareness. The people should come to know what exactly is the law in this country. And how, from where, from which place, through whom they can get these certificates is the next thing. Now, incidentally, I just intend to tell you, we have a legal cell of our own. And uh, just two months ago, we had conducted a program. And there are as many as 100 students who took part in this. And it was actually, remember, trying to build up leadership amongst the students. Because students, remember, may be knowing bookish knowledge. But practically, they don't know anything about these developments, how it is obtained, whom should we meet. And for example, when we speak about this, we just take the help of Anganwadi teachers. 
we take the help of uh, the other uh, people asha workers all of them join together suppose for example if the legal aid program in a village is for about uh, about a week the last two days is exclusively de devoted to resolve the applications and get the certificate from the proper place and it actually gives and imbibes the true knowledge of law and students may not be knowing for example uh, we had committed uh, conducted another uh, uh, program and in this program we were trying to help uh, the uh, bangalore uh, municipal authority bbmp corporation in assisting them in preparing the documents and this document when they prepare the students naturally get to know the real estate law properly they come to know the land laws properly they come to know the law relating to the electricity the water water law for example water services are being given how what exactly is the law now when once you are trained for this remember when you come out you will be a wonderful civil lawyer on the one side you are helping freely to the people on the other side you are getting educated on certain principles of law that is the objective of the legal services which is are being provided now it becomes uh, actually uh, creates leadership and it tries to build and help the egalitarian society in a state like india now recently the the uh, legal services authority uh, uh, has taken a decision to give special protection to the widows and widows may be from anywhere from mathura they have made a mention of it or there may be in some other place they need protection because there should be somebody to take care of them and they also come under the provisions of the legal services authority in addition to this the along with this they have decided to protect the transgenders now transgenders also need a protection they should not be condemned because they are part of the society if we have a right they too have a right to live in the right to life is a basic fundamental right and whatever help is required is being done now there are other things one of the instances i just intend to give you before i request my colleague to speak a few words on the on other aspects now recently a beautiful a case has been resolved by the legal services authority in one of the districts a lady remember actually from the state of kerala was wandering somewhere in one of the districts in karnataka so the paralegal uh, authorities one day found out this lady and started making inquiry because her health was deteriorating when her, her health was naturally deteriorating they met her and made an investigation and later they they were not in a position to get anything from her they found her aadhar card and when this aadhar card was typed she they came to know found out she they, they she comes from a very rich family with the crores and crores of rupees with us uh, the children or the nearest people who are related to her got away her property and abandoned her and then the legal services authority come into the picture and having come into the picture immediately get in touch with the, the people who are related to her and call them call for a meeting and they said deposit this money this much of money and she was admitted to the hospital taken care there afterwards immediately they said your property the concerned share since it is in her name only you cannot just manipulate she should be taken care all these things remember an abandoned woman who was wandering in thousands kilometers away was protected by this such incidents are not one hundreds of them hundreds of them are there and in karnataka i, I just remember at the taluka level 100 in 149 talukas we have legal aid committees and these legal aid committees are to protect and they and uh, they are the students of the law colleges are being helped by this way and the students also get to know and come to know and they learn and it is a process of learning thank you very much yeah. yes ma'am over to you thank you i will be specifically addressing the issues on lok adalat one of the aspect which uh, is also plays a very important role youth country 
we know we are having around 4.4 million pending cases and how a concept of lok adalat has helped in reducing the number of pending litigations which are pending before the court lok adalat as a concept itself is a alternate dispute resolution mechanisms and it is a forum where uh, a case which is pending before the court can be referred to lok adalat or a case which is pre litigation stage at any stage of pre litigation can also be referred to lok adalat and lok adalat per se itself is a statutory status and this lok adalat gets a statutory status according to the legal services authorities act 1987 and as i told it's also an alternate dispute resolution mechanisms we have five important alternate dispute resolution mechanisms where lok adalat is one very important mechanisms which helps to solve the disputes amicably and once a case which is pending before the court is referred to lok adalat and if in lok adalat if the matter is settled that award which has been passed in the lok adalat is final and it is binding on the parties and on this particular uh, award there lies no appeal which means the party cannot go and appeal to the higher court and the best part of this is there is no court fees which needs to pay if uh, you are going to a lok adalat aspect in pre litigation stage or if a case which is pending before the court and you if the matter is referred to lok adalat then the uh, amount which you have paid as court fees is completely refunded to the parties the other important nature of cases which can be referred to lok adalat is one the case which is pending or the case which you are likely to be filing before the uh, court and here the offenses which are non compoundable in nature cannot be referred to lok adalat rest every matters can be referred to lok adalat and how do you refer the matters to the lok adalat is a case which is pending the judicial officer has all the rights to refer the matter to lok adalat with the consent of both the parties or if he thinks there is possibilities of settling the matter amicably and in a pre litigation stage the state legal service authority or the district legal service authority on receipt of an application from one either one of the party telling that there there is a likelihood of a dispute and based on which they can issue notice to the other party and settle the matter amicably but there are a lot of advantages of this lok adalat one the procedures are very flexible and there is speedy trial of the disputes there is no strict applicability of the procedural laws like normally in the trial which we follow the civil procedure code and the evidence act those sort of strict application of the procedural laws is not applicable in the aspect of lok adalat and the parties get opportunity to share uh, freely what are their concerns and which these thoughts which they cannot share it before the court of law when the trial is happening the parties get an opportunity to talk to the judges directly and talk to them and talk about the fears and the problems which they face and then there is no court fees and if they have already paid the entire court fees is refunded which is also very less expensive and the other one last one is the award passed in the lok adalat is final and binding on the parties normally once the trial gets over after the judgment comes we got an appeal or we got second appeal and then we go to supreme court so once an award is passed by the um, lok adalat then it becomes final and binding this also helps in reducing the stage uh, litigations which is pending before the court and as we know in the uh, lok adalat across the country there are more than 15.14 lakh uh, lok adalat which has been organized across the country and of which more than 8.25 crore cases are also settled through this mechanisms which is very effective and in karnataka also many many cases have been solved through lok adalats the next uh, aspect is type local this is permanent local it has been explained under section 22b of the legal services authority act the permanent local adalat is a statutory body which is constituted with a chairman and two members and here they are only able, they can only take up the matters with related to public utility services so what comes under the public utility services are transport services postal telegram and telephone services supply of power light and water 
systems of public uh, sanitation, use of hospitals, dispensaries, insurance services, or any other schemes which has been sponsored by the central or the state government, which on this particular public services, if they cannot avail this, they can go and file a case of any disputed nature, can file it before the permanent low kadalit. The permanent low kadalit has a jurisdiction. They can make an amount of one crore rupees. And here, unlike the low kadalit, even if one the matter, the permanent low kadalit, the members and the Restriction to continue with the dispute and pass an award. And this award passed by the permanent local Dalit is again uh, final and binding on the parties. In our country, there are more than um, one lakh to two lakh cases disposed in the uh, with the help of permanent local Dalit. And they have also refunded uh, around 23 crore uh, of rupees to the uh, litigants who have been finding it difficult to otherwise get refund from non-functioning of these public utility services. So these are the two kind of um, low kadalas which play a very prominent and important role in solving disputes and reducing the number of litigations pending in a country. Then to take forward the discussions on specifically with regard to the camps which the law colleges conduct and why it is important for law colleges to also play a very important role in reaching out to the communities and also help the government and the courts in reducing the litigation and what happens in the uh, legal services camp module which has been very clearly highlighted in the national legal services authorities a scheme 2013 subsequently in 2016 they came out with a scheme telling that it's mandatory for all the law colleges to come out with a legal services camp module and this camp module helps the people to want to create awareness and to clarify the doubts, thirdly, to also take assistance from the students and the faculties who are going there as part of legal services camp module and to give them various legal opinions through which if required, they can go to court or if required, they can help them in approaching to a particular department to avail their uh, benefits which otherwise they are not able to get or they are not aware what are the documents they need to give to avail these facilities. So this uh, is one of the important step which has been um, which is uh, way forward, which has been uh, come out by the National Legal Service Authority. And the aim and objective of the village legal services camp module is to educate the weaker sections of the society about the rights, about the benefits and the privileges guaranteed by the social welfare legislations and other enactment as well as the administrative programs and the schemes. The objective of the legal services camps is one is to spread awareness on social legislations and various schemes which are available to the people at large and then how the community can access these schemes and how in case they're not able to access whom to approach to know the way forward and then this particular thing is also uh, the uh, camp module also helps them in availing the not only the schemes the benefits time to time benefits which the government launches and also to understand the legal need of the people and to address these legal problems and appropriately recommend what legal advice and measures can be taken. This uh, legal uh, camp module have three stages. One is called as a pre-camp module. In the pre-camp module, the most important thing which law colleges have to do is First important thing is they need to get in connected with the state legal services authority. Like our college connected with the Karnataka legal services authority, who were very complete, who provided us with complete support and guidance in taking forward this particular uh, camp module to the village. First to have coordination with the legal services authority and with the district legal services authority. Then the second important thing is to identify the target audience. Whom are we trying to achieve? Which village are we adopting? And what are we trying to address in this particular village? Third is to formulate a team with students, faculties. And the fourth one is to go there and understand what are the, in each village, there are different schemes. 
if it is a coastal village they have lot of schemes with regard to fisheries if it is an agriculture they if they most of the families are dependent on agriculture there are lot of schemes with regard to agriculture so according to that based on the identified geographical locations they we are going to identify the needs what they want and then to identify the needs and the schemes specifically available for that particular need and then you have to uh, conduct pre camp meetings with all the stakeholders and identify the village and the venue to conduct your camp and to next to have the students going to collect door to door information here normally what happens is we expect people to come to the court or the lawyers but here it's vice versa the students and the colleges go to the uh, houses and ask do you have a problem in if so what is the problem you are having with a complete detailed questionnaire is prepared and through this questionnaire we collect information on what are the difficulties where the people are why they are not able to avail these facilities and why there is difficulty in accessing these basic schemes these are identified collect data is collected from them and then it is segregated and these segregated informations are given to each departments before uh, we go into the field also there are a lot of meetings conducted with all the stakeholders with complete support of the karnataka state legal services authority we could meet with all the departments with panchayats with asha workers social workers with anganwadi workers and with the watermen who also helped us in taking our students to the field and then the challenges the most of the important challenges which we faced was there were households were very reluctant to give us a lot of information they were very curious to know why are we going the first uh, challenge the second challenge is many of them come like this and collect information but still we have not received any benefits so that's the next important challenge which they try to explain the third important challenge is this is just collection of data like others you don't come back to us so uh, what is the use we always tell you the problems we don't get anything in return so these challenges is overcome by us and we uh, try to collect data from around 18 villages and uh, two panchayats was adopted more than 3000 households we visited every uh, student went door to door with a detailed questionnaire with all these in spite of all these challenges we could access the communities with the help of asha workers because they are working in the field with panchayat members and also with the help of watermen who supply water to the houses because of which the communities got confidence on these uh, students and the uh, when we approached them they started sharing the difficulties and why they are not able to avail these benefits or get a legal remedy which they really require with this all these details were collected and along with this parallelly we also conducted lot of awareness workshops in the field talking about the social legislations talking about women empowerment talking about the child rights talking about the uh, agricultural rights the lay right to education or oh, serious citizens act right to education many acts awareness was conducted parallelly so that they are uh, one side awareness was happening one side we we were conducting the uh, collecting the uh, questionnaire format of information on their difficulties so both was the happening um, parallelly and then uh, on the final day this was a seven days camp module on the final day all the departments came to that particular venue which was identified that is the second stage of the camp module which is on the day of the camp may all the departments came put on the stalls there were a lot of community members who came there and st they started interacting with the departments and trying to understand what are the documents which i need to produce if i need to avail these benefits and if i need to apply for a particular scheme what are the documents i need to uh, produce all this was shared every department gave 5 to 10 minutes awareness programs on their schemes and if they want to avail their schemes what are the um, required documents which these community members need to produce to them all these were uh, given and highlighted to the community members and the next day the community members were given an opportunity to come and give those submit those documents and an application in detail 
or asking them this scheme I want. This is the requirement. I want Aadhaar card. I want health card. I want birth and death certificate. I want old age pension. So all these were the needs which they identified and they wrote and gave and they also submitted along with their documents. Many of them got remedy on that second day of the camp at the venue itself. More than 700 people got Aadhaar cards in from that village and many of them also got health cards. Subsequent to that, the third uh, the, uh, level of the particular uh, camp module is post camp what happens. So the data which we collect in the field are segregated and then whichever, whoever have got the remedy, we give it, hand it over to the departments who have not got the remedy, we follow up with the district legal service authority and go to the concerned departments and ensure that if they are eligible for the particular benefit and scheme that needs to be given to them. So that's the third important phase, which the that's called post uh, camp module, which we are doing. And through this, what happens is many of the departments are now coming up openly and speaking about their uh, for um, the schemes. For example, the women and child department comes and speaks about the Bhagya Lakshmi bond, which is given to the communities. The health department talk about the Ayushman card, which they issue, which is uh, very easy to avail, but people do not know it's so easy to get that uh, card. And the third revenue departments come and talk about the Aadhaar cards, and they also gave the Aadhaar card. They bought the entire equipments which needs to take photographs of the eye, the hand punching, and all those. And this gave them the immediately Aadhaar card was provided to the people. The education department spoke about the scholarship available to the school students, and also spoke about the girl child's welfare schemes. The agriculture department spoke about the free distribution of seeds. They also spoke about um, distributing. Eat seeds and uh, components of the seeds. If you do not have space within this push space, what we grow. And all this was shared by the agriculture departments, through which many of the people got benefited. And sub post uh, camp module is also helping these people in availing these benefits and uh, facilities. So um, the outcome of this entire legal services camp module is through the service, we could take the legal services to the doorstep of the needy people who otherwise find it difficult to find solution to their legal issues. It is healthy and it is not only weaker sections, it also helps the communities who do not or lack information on how to avail these facilities. That's one parallel side. The other one was many pending cases, which was already pending in the court. Many of them came and told us that they want to settle these matters amicably. So we have also referred around 40 to 50 cases to the local adalets, which is happening in the district level. And the mayor, we also knew the first local adalet, around 20 matters got settled. So which people were not aware that there was an existing of a local adalet system they could go and even settle the matters amicably so through this village legal services camp module we were able to achieve the objectives and go to the people at the doorstep to ensure that they avail the legal services thank you yes ma'am the dual combination of yours to have a perspective in terms of the legal services how, how it has developed I think a lot of people not only because of the students lawyers and as we had talked to Dr. Subramanian the basic context in which we had taken the session was that people down uh, the talukas, villages, everybody is sensitized what are the rights etc. And the subtle difference between the normal course, the ADRs, the permanent local dalits has elaboratedly and extensively has been handled and how the paralegal services have also been playing a pivotal role in the today's society. As they say that they are constituent despite the fact that there is so much clogging of the court cases, but the legal services have created the space which has helped to do all this. And now it's... Uh, one question, sir, it has been to you. Can the alumni also take part in such camps? Uh, alumni, uh, as of now, it is meant for the students because the alumni 
uh, when they were students, they were supposed to have taken the uh, taken part. So I am not able to give a certain reply because it is meant only for the students as per the Bar Council resolution. Uh, Vidya, any answer you have? So, but sir, because once you become a lawyer, sir, you automatically you have a situation where you can always contribute. As as a lawyer, you can get impaneled. You can work the district social services, uh, district district uh, this DSLSA and Nalsar etc. Or you can get yourself associated. And be that as made, once you have to sensitize the society as a lawyer or as a social engineering social worker, you can always do that. The one yeah. important factor what I have found is. Uh, uh, majority of the students uh, uh, who are in the urban law schools come from uh, uh, middle class above uh, background. Uh, as Gunnar Middle Initiation Drama has pointed out, most of our administrators today, uh, they, they, when he wrote, he wrote long back in the 1950s, Asian drama in three volumes which came in. Uh, administrators to today are, don't have uh, the uh, the first hand touch of the society or the rural village. And they are the ones who make the law. So if the students at this stage are involved to go to the villages and to try to find out their problems, and uh, actually they will be in a position to give a better answer and themselves become good leaders of society. That is a great thing, which I have realized when we conducted our program for a week very recently. And all the high court judges were so happy and thrilled. They're all torchbearers of the society. They say that they are just like the saplings which will ultimately grow into the trees and give the right shade to the society at large by giving them the right sucker of uh, social legal impact on the social society with the legal impacts. So thank you to both of you. And those who have missed our sessions, earlier ones, they can like, subscribe and share to the Beyond Law CLC and join our WhatsApp group for the latest updates. Thank